everyone and welcome to another tutorial from Colour with Claire. So I recently completed this page in the latest edition of Colouring Heaven which was Animal Wonderland Special with designs from Kanoko Agusa and I got really really good feedback from everybody about the picture specifically people wanting me to do tutorials or a colour along of how I coloured the page. Now if you've been watching my channel for a while you'll know that I'm pretty unreliable when it comes to colour alongs um, I tend to start out with the best intentions and then I'll forget or m more important things will come along and, and I'm just not very good with keeping up with colour alongs. So what I thought I'd do is a couple of tutorials. First of all, one for the base of the lamp with this tarnished brass looking metal because that was you know mentioned quite a lot. And also how I did the, the Tiffany lampshade as well. Now, if you want to know how I did the macarons, I followed a tutorial in Helen Elliston's Colorist Special Effects. I think it's book two that has the macarons. And everything else, I just winged it, you know, as usual. Uh, the fabric, I do have a tutorial already for how to colour folds in fabric. Um, and yeah, the, the, the bowl in the background, all I did was use... Um, the cool greys from the Prismacolor set just you know in, in gradation from dark to light but I then just put a little bit of lime peel green over the edges just to give it that tarnished look so I'm not going to bother doing that because it's very simple um, it's all very simple but you specifically wanted to know how to do this tarnished metal so that's what we're going to do in this video so I have another copy of the design here printed so that we can do our tutorial because of course I didn't film it while I was doing it <laughs> wouldn't be that simple I'm gonna zoom in and make sure that we're center so that you can see exactly what I'm doing and then we'll see what pencils we have to use so of course I've used Prismacolor it's my normal pencil of choice and the colors that you're gonna need are there's just four of them it's sepia PC 948 Sandbar Brown, PC 1094, Lime Peel, PC 1005, and finally Jasmine, PC 1012, hopefully that's on screen, there we go. <laughs> and then you'll need some form of white opaque medium, whether that's a Posca pen like I've got here, or some white acrylic and a paintbrush, anything that you've got that's white that we can use for highlights is fantastic. So that's really it, let's get started. I always colour from dark to light, as I think you'll know by now if you've watched my videos. You're obviously welcome to do exactly what you want, you can go light to dark, but this is how I did it on the page, so it's how I'm going to do it to show you. So I'm starting off with the darkest, which is the sepia, and to the left, oh sorry, to the right, I don't know my left and right, <laughs> I do, to the right of each line on this section here, I'm just going to do a line that runs completely parallel with it. So I'll just do it here. You need really sharp pencils, by the way, because this is a super narrow area to colour. But you know I don't take things, you know, seriously really when it comes to colouring. So if I, I definitely will go over the lines and stuff like that. It's not going to be perfect. But yeah, so just to the right of every line, which is the left of each section, I think that's why I was getting mixed up. Um, I'm just going to follow the line along with the sepia. Very, very simple as everything always is on my tutorials. Now this very end section is very narrow, so there's a good chance that we're not going to be able to get all of our four colours on there, which is fine. We'll just leave the, the look of colour on there, doesn't really matter. Now the top and the bottom of this section also need to be quite dark, so with the same pencil, the sepia, I'm just going to fill in a small portion of the bottom of this lamp base or the bottom of this section anyway now usually when I've got something kind of rounded like this I'll come up a bit 
at either side. So it's going to be quite low here, the amount of sepia that you're putting in the middle. And then up the sides, it sort of creeps up more. And it just gives that look. It just gives that look of, of three-dimensional thing. I don't know. But that's what I do anyway. I think it works. So we've got the dark at the base. Now we need some dark at the top. So exactly the same thing in reverse. Now we're going to come down more at the sides and then slightly less in the middle. So you end up with kind of an oval of, of colour. And it will look something like that. Now the next colour is the sandbar brown and this brown is, it almost has a green tinge to it. So I think it's a great transition colour from getting to a very dark brown of the sepia to the next colour which is lime peel. So when you're blending you're always looking for good colours that make um, a good transition across from one to the other. Especially if you know, we're going from a dark brown to a very, very light yellowish colour in just four pencils. So the transition colours that you choose are really important. And I chose the sandbar brown because it has a little bit of green in it. It's a very greenish brown. And again, all we're doing is we're just thickening those lines that we made with the sepia. So you're blending the sepia and you're thickening the line, starting to fill up all the white sections. As I say, on these really narrow areas, you can't be expected to get a lot of colour on there. That's fine. Now we're going to carry on the sepia just at the bottom here. We, uh, not the sepia, the, uh, the sandbar brown. Just bring it up a little bit from the bottom, but I don't want to go too far. I don't want to, you know, really decrease the space in the middle so just do a little bit just so it's not as harsh and it just gives it, it gives it a little bit more dimension okay then we're going to move on to the lime peel and again we're just thickening the lines that we've put down but we do want to leave a nice big biggish area of white for the jasmine to go on to because that is what really makes the lamp the metal look goldy brassy and it is the browns and the green that give the tarnished effect now don't forget this is just me winging it I'm not you know any form of artist or colored pencil flipping aficionado or anything like that uh, as much as I'd like to be so you know I don't really know any arty techniques or arty farty language or anything like that this is just me winging it and trying to achieve a look as best I can so the final colour is the jasmine and we're going to fill that in so every section just fill it in with jasmine Until everything's everything's filled in and coloured so that is the the basics of it now what I like to do is go in and just redefine all of the colours once again and it doesn't take long to do that because of course you've already put the foundation down for it so you're just going over it again really to redefine everything all of the the lines and the sections just to give it a bit more definition to look I don't know just better so I'm just redefining all of these sections with the sepia. As I say, I don't really, you know, I don't really do anything too technical. It's just how it is. And then the sandbar. Uh, 
I could go in with some lime peel. I don't know if it really needs it, but let's put some on there anyway, just to maximize the effect. But as long as you've got, you know, your jasmine is really prominent. That's the basics of it really, uh, just to add some of this sepia again to the bottom because we didn't redefine that bit did we? So that's what I'm going to do. Okay so that's the basic, the basic technique. Now we do need our white Posca pen or acrylic paint or whatever you want and that will um, create some highlights on this. And I do that really, really easily. In fact, I'm just going to see if I've got something a little bit thinner. I do have a really thin white Posca somewhere, but of course, I haven't got it with me at the moment. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just put a line down every section. So again, this is actually optional. You don't have to do this, but you know me, I'm a white gel pen fiend. And I will put it absolutely everywhere that I can possibly put it. So just putting a line down each section and I've got really shaky hands as you can see but the general effect is there don't think I'm going to be able to fit another line I'll just do a little bit here and there um, and that's it. That's exactly what I did on the original page. So as you can see, it's super, super simple. There's nothing really technical about it at all. Uh, the white gel pen that I'm using, just in case you want to know, is a Uniball Sino Broad. You can get them from, you know, anywhere, Amazon, eBay, whatever. So that is the top bit of the base. Now we're going to move on to this bottom bit here. So again, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's where you want to put the colours, I guess, is what you want to know. So we're going to start off again with the sepia, the darkest one. And we're just going to colour the edge here and just up, following the lines that Kanoko has put in herself. So just up here a bit, up here a bit, down across and up here a bit. And just define that a bit more. And then your sandbar brown, again, just thickening it up, blending it in. Then we've got a bit of lime peel. And finally, filling it in with jasmine. Now, do you want to go back in just as we did before to redefine? Because when you're going from dark to light and your light colour, the next colour that you use is blending into the previous, it can often dull the definition and the colour of the darker previous colour. So it is handy just to go back in afterwards and just repeat the process to um, inject some more vibrancy into, into the lines that you put down initially. So I've got the lime peel. the jasmine and I'm just going to bring the sepia back in and just do a few little lines up either side just so it doesn't look like these two big gaping sections uh, just have a few little little lines in there just for an effect and then if you take the sandbar brown and very lightly do a layer over the jasmine it just dulls the jasmine down a little bit because we don't want it to be too bright we want it to have that tarnished dull effect 
so you don't need heavy pressure or anything you just need to just do one little layer of of the sandbar brown over the jasmine to dull it a little bit and you really you can do that on, on the top bit that we just did as well uh, it's up to you it depends how it's looking when you do it because it's not going to be identical to mine now um, for this little ring here all I did was bring sepia in either side and just meet the colours in the middle in order so sepia sandbar lime peel and jasmine now then for this bit here again we're going to go in same same order um, I'm going to do sepia following the lines so just colouring straight up the lines with the sepia You can be a lot more um, careful with yours than me. <laughs> As you know, I like to rush. I'm just following all of the lines. And then at the top just as we did on the previous part of the lamp I'm gonna color the sepia all the way across and just drag it down a little bit so I guess it gives a look of shadow to to underneath of this ring which is more sort of protruding from the lamp and again I'm bringing it down either side a little bit longer than in the middle Hopefully that makes sense. I'm doing that for each section. And at the bottom, just bring it either side of the lines that you've put down. Don't have too much to do here because a lot of it is covered by other things. So when you've done that, You've done the basic outline of the section just lightly with the sepia thicken it just lightly we don't need a lot this is just acting again as the base for the next color to blend into and transition and things like that so really lightly nice and fuzzy there we go so that's the sepia put down next up we've got the sandbar brown of course and again just follow the lines you've put down try and keep it quite narrow because we don't want to use up all the space before we finished coloring on these larger areas you've got more to play with obviously so you can go a little bit further with your colors So that's the sandbar brown bit put in. I think you can see where we're going with this. It's all the same technique. Next up is the lime peel. You can only put a little bit of this in here because we've got such little room to play with on those initial sections. You can get a lot more in here and you can actually see the lime peel much better than on the rest of the lamp because we've got room for it. But really, previously, I'm, I'm using the lime peel just to enhance the green that's in the sandbar brown. Um, because, as I say, the green is, is what kind of makes it look tarnished. So don't worry if it looks too bright and in your face at the moment. Of course, we are going to go over and do our second layer 
to dull it down a little bit. Okay, and now with the jasmine, the final colour, you can colour it all in. quite a lot of jasmine here as you can see but don't worry as I say we are going to creep it back in so it doesn't look so huge of an area okay so back in with the sepia the lines the sepia lines don't actually look very affected on this bit so we don't need to do too much really I'll just redefine them anyway I just love how the green just adds an extra element of antiqueness to it. I was going to say antiquity then, but that's a completely different different word, isn't it? <laughs> it just lends it. It just lends to the effect. So that's our sepia bits redone. Again with the sandbar brown. And I'm coming straight over the lime peel here with the sandbar brown because we are trying to reduce that jasmine area just a bit and also dull the jasmine a bit with the sandbar which we'll do in a moment so straight over the lime peel blending in with the sepia And then lime peel again. You see how we've really decreased the area of jasmine that we had before. The layering up of these wax pencils also adds to the tarnished effect because you can see in some areas the wax kind of builds up and leaves a texture. And that really helps actually with the look that we're going for. And then of course the jasmine again, just a bit to blend in with the lime peel. And we'll do what we did before, which was take a light hand of sandbar over the whole lot. Now for this little bottom bit here, very, very simple. So we're gonna do kind of what we did on that ring up there. Sepia at either side of the scallop. And here at the bottom as well, just on the bit that you've got, that you can see. And then also on the line that comes up. So just make sure you don't forget that line. So this is scalloped bottom, as you can see. So we do that and then again, sandbar. You see, I'm not trying very hard to be neat, especially on this bit, because it's just so small and it gives the effect anyway, and that's what I'm after. So a little bit of sandbar there. Oh gosh, going right over the lines. Then you've got your lime peel. and the jasmine.
again, just redefine them all very quickly. Decrease the area of the, the, uh, the jasmine if you can or if you need to. Do not go over the lines as much as I am. <laughs> Demo purposes and an impatient teacher is what results in colouring like this. Lime peel, just to give it a little bit more of a blend there. In fact, I am going to bring this sandbar out a bit more because it, we need it to follow on, don't we, from the top. Don't want the light source or the shine to be in a different place. And then just sandbar again over the, the whole lot. I'm just going to bring a bit more sepia in here because I'm not happy with how narrow the dark area is on this scallop. It's a bit better. So I'm just finagling at the minute, <laughs> which is basically messing around, puttering around because I can't leave things alone. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's fine. Now to put in our highlights. So we just want a little bit of a line. Let's just get this working. A little bit of a line in here. So each kind of section, I'm not, you know, it's not technical. And then we want a, a line oh, dead center of the jasmine on this bit. And same on here, follow the curve. This one curves outwards a bit, that one curves that way a bit. And for these, you don't really need to worry too much. Now, I want to thicken the bottom of the line a little bit because it, it the actual shape thickens. So we need to thicken the highlight as well. So for that, I'm just going to create um, a thicker highlight down here that sort of tapers up. So just adding a bit of a triangular bit on the end. Okay, and then at the bottom, all I did on the original was just do a little squig squiggle of white there. Um, and I think that's it. So <laughs> there we go. I'm just really hoping um, that this, oh it is, it's directly under the light so you can see all the wax glaring which is really annoying but I'm going to just put it to one side out of the direct light and you can see the difference that makes because you're looking at all the glare of the wax but if I just move it out of the light you can see the finished result. It's really annoying having this overhead light, it always does that but hopefully you've got the gist of how to create this beautiful um, weathered battered tarnished metal antique look <laughs> so i really really hope you've enjoyed it as i say i'm going to do a separate video for the tiffany lamp i won't be coloring the whole thing because i'm just going to show you a few steps that i took to do it um and i really hope it's helped so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon on color with claire